the wires and switches in our classic British cars are often antiquated. And the lights we use today are often brighter and can call for more current than the originals may have had. Dirt and corrosion get into our switches and connections. With all these ingredients, electric problems with our classic British cars, well, they're not unheard of. One way to address our car's electric weakness, or weaknesses, and sometimes make part of the car even better than new, is to install a headlight relay kit. And this will be good for us because the same principle applies to fog lights and driving lights and perhaps something else that you might want to put in your car electrically. Now, if you've never installed a relay, it's not hard. If you can count to four, if you can read, and you can distinguish colors, you have all the needed skills. So let's see just how easy this is. But first, what is a relay? What does it do? And why use a relay at all? Well, the relays that we're going to use in our classic British cars are essentially dedicated off-on switches. Its internal parts are designed for one job. It's a specialist. Relays are usually sealed, as you can see in this one here and in this one here. And what that does is that keeps out the dirt and the dust and the moisture. So these are often better designed and more durable than many conventional switches. They tend to be tougher. They tend to last longer. So how does it do its job? Well, a simple relay has four wires and two wires go in from one side to the other. And if you could look inside with Superman's eyes, you would see a set of contacts in there, one like that and one like that, and they're open, they're not touching. And what we need to do is, of course, there's gonna be a lead coming in here and a lead going out there. And what we need to do is have these come in contact with one another. And when they do, current can flow across. Well, how do we make them make contact? Well, inside the relay, right below the first set of contacts, is a small coil of wire, which is an electromagnet. So we have the relays, the contacts right here, the magnets just below. And when these are set like that and we put power in, the magnet comes to life, and it's going to pull the contacts close. And what's interesting, it takes a very, very small amount of current to bring that magnet to life and make all of this work. Okay, so with that in mind, for decades, we didn't use relays. For decades, we were content to run the power for our lights and our horns and our switches from the cockpit. Then we started to rethink the wisdom of that. As early as the TR4A, Triumph started to use a relay to power the horns, the second most power, biggest, the second biggest power consumer in most of these little cars. Around 1970, MGB started using a relay to feed the starter solenoid. Think about that. We used the switch to turn on the relay. We turned the relay to turn on the solenoid. We turned the solenoid to turn on the starter. And it proved it as a value in a series of specialists, and relays are a specialist. This worked so well for MGB that they added another relay later on to turn on the parts of the ignition system. Now, if you also happen to drive a modern car, you would probably be surprised at how many relays it has. They're usually trouble-free. You know, if you push the button on the alarm in your car's burglar alarm, who blinks the lights off and on to tell you it's on? A relay. Who turns off the cruise control when you step on the brake pedal? A relay. Who turns the interior lights on when you open the door and then turns them off after you start your motor? A relay. Who keeps the headlights on for a minute or two at night when you park your car so you can walk to the door of your home in the light? A relay. In fact, most of the switches in a modern car are not directly connected to the consumers. They're connected to relays. The relays are connected to consumers. Why do modern cars make such extensive use of relays? The answer is they're simple and they're dedicated to one task. If you install a quality relay, it will probably last the life of the car. So a person might ask, well, why do I want to put a relay in my classic British car? That's a good question. Let's illustrate the point, okay? This, this technician has been known at home from time to time to push the vacuum cleaner around. In fact, to do it a lot. And I've run into this problem and you've probably been there too. You're vacuuming away and you get, and you've maybe got another five or six feet to go when you're done. And all of a sudden you can't move the vacuum cleaner anymore because you've run out of cord. The cord's plugged in over there and it's just not long enough. So if you do what I'll do, I'll just leave it running, walk back to the wall receptacle, pull the plug out. I walk over to a receptacle that's closer and stick the plug back in again. The vacuum cleaner comes back to life and I can finish my job. If you've ever done that, you would have noticed two things happen. Okay, first, when you pull the wire out of the first receptacle, there was a spark. Okay, when you put the wire into the second receptacle, there was another spark, an arc. Why? 
Well, every time you make or break an electric connection, you're going to get a little bit of an arc, a little spark in there. Now, this is because in this case, I left the vacuum cleaner running, so the spark happens at the plug. But if I turned the vacuum cleaner off and plugged it in, when I turn the switch on in the vacuum cleaner, the spark would be in there. There's always going to be a spark when I make or I break a connection. Now, hold that thought for a moment. Just the other day, I walked into the break room here at Moss Motors, and there's a little toaster in there. And I turned the toaster upside down. The label on the bottom says it calls for 120 volts and that it's rated to 850 watts. Some simple algebra tells us that this toaster draws about 7 amps. Well, most of us already know that, draws, that the toasters draw a good deal of current. However, in this technician's experience, most headlights draw between 4 and 4.5 four and amps each. So a pair of them is going to draw 8 to 9 amps. That's more than our little toaster draws. Now, when you're driving with your headlights on, that's the kind of power you have flowing through your light switch. It's amazing they last as long as they do. That's a lot of current. Actually, the headlight switch in your car can handle that kind of current. It was built for it. However, there's another challenge for your switch, a challenge that kills many of them. Remember that every time you make or break an electric contact, you get between two surfaces, you get a spark or an arc. Well, when that arc occurs, any carbon or any dust that's in the air between the contacts affixes itself to the contacts. We've used those contacts turn black and they look burned. Okay? That's what happens to the contacts inside a light switch. You turn it off and on, off and on, day after day after day, and those contacts inside get burned. Okay? As they get burned, as they get covered with carbon, they offer resistance. The electricity fights to get through the resistance and it gets through, but two things happen. One, some of the current is lost in that battle to get through, and that puts the lights on a kind of an electric diet. Number two, the current that's lost trying to get through is converted to heat inside the switch. Now here at Moss Motors, we occasionally get phone calls from people, from, from drivers, and they'll say, I was driving my car the other night and I reached out and I realized that the headlight switch was warm. I've had people tell me their headlight switch is hot. This technician has seen headlight switches that were melted. In any one of those cases, if you would open up and look inside that switch, I can guarantee you those surfaces are burned, and it's that resistance, the electricity trying to get through, that leads to heat. Now, we just learned that heat is only one of the two problems. Heat that comes off the switch is from electricity. Any electricity that's converted to heat is electricity that's not available for the lights. The lights lose some of their brightness, and that's a problem. Now, it's important to understand something. Does that mean that every time somebody has dim lights, their headlight switch must be bad? No. Okay, lights, headlights naturally dull with age. As you drive at night, sometimes the brightness of the oncoming cars, you'll see that their lights have different varieties or different levels of brightness. Now, sometimes a car might have special lights in it, but usually cars with newer lights are brighter, and as they get older, they get duller. So if the lights in your car aren't doing what they're supposed to be, they don't have their original brightness, just changing your lights might bring them back to where they used to be. That's a simple and easy fix. However, when the contacts in your light switch get carboned up, the headlamps get dull because they're not getting enough electricity. They don't get the electricity they need, and the dullness and the heat are a problem. That dullness and that heat can be conquered with one simple cure, a relay. Let's see how that works out for us. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look. I've got a wiring diagram here from a headlight kit, part number 117-515. And I recognize that this looks a little convoluted. If you're not used to seeing these, it can be a little intimidating. But don't worry about it. We only want to notice two things right now. Number one, you have a red wire coming up here that's coming from power. Number two, we have a black wire, and that's ground. Red is power, black is ground. Let's hold that for a minute. And what I want to do is I want to reposition these little pieces of paper to block out some of the distractions. Okay, now, here's the relay. Okay, now what we want to do is I'm going to ask you to use Superman's eyes again. I'm going to look inside the relay, and I'm going to put that first set of contacts there. Do you remember I told you that there's a set of contacts and one's open and the other one's right there waiting and the natural point is being opened like that but then when they get closed, that function? We have power coming in on the red wire. It goes into one side of the set of contacts and comes out and goes to whatever consumer we want it to. But right now, there's a little gap in there. The contacts are open. Nothing's happening. We learned that we need a little electromagnet. And we're going to put that in there. Graphic design is not my strong suit. Okay, and the little electromagnet needs ground 
to operate. And when she gets power, what she's going to do is become a magnet and she's going to pull those contacts closed. Well, how is this ever going to get ground or get the power? She has the ground. She needs electricity. Well, over here is my light switch. And if you remember, before we started talking about relays, it would have worked something like this. Electricity from the light switch would have come and run around and gone to my low beams. My light switch has electricity. So if I put a relay in, what happens is when I turn my light switch on, it only needs a small amount of electricity to run through and turn on this magnet. When the magnet comes to life, we pull the contacts together, and now I've got a nice fresh flow of clean electricity, no dirty contacts, no problems with the switch, no heat. It runs right through, and in this case, it goes to my low beams, and now they work. If we understand how that works, this whole thing becomes a whole lot easier because we can take a look now. We can say, okay, there's the low beam circuit right there, and this other part is the exact same thing, but it's for the high beams. I mentioned in the beginning you only need three skills. I said you need to be able to count to four. One wire, two wires, three wires, four. I said you need to be able to read colors. Well, there's red, there's black. We can do that. And I said you need to be able to read in general. There's a 30, a 87, 86, 85. We can do this. It's not hard to do. And when this is done, what's going to happen is from now on, it's going to function the way that we want it to with crisp, bright lights. Now, sometimes here at Moss, we'll get, a, we'll get a call and somebody will say, I put a headlight switch kit in, I had a relay switch kit in, and you know what? Only my left light works. I turn it, it works great. It comes right on, it's nice and bright, but it's only the left. Well, I thought maybe I had a bad bulb, so I swapped my bulbs, and when I swapped my bulb, the left side's still the only one that works. What happened? Well, think about it. Way back when, when we had just a light switch feeding the low beams, one lead came out of this, but there's two headlights up the front of the car, two low beams. So somewhere along the way, there has to be a Y. If we go and we put our headlight relay kit in on one side of the Y, we're only going to have a light on one side of the car. You have to make sure that you tie in your relay before the Y so that both sides get their power. That'll take care of that. Another point that you want to keep in mind is that this, for example, mentions a bullet connector. Okay. These, these fit various cars. You may or may not have bullet connectors at a specific point. And also other people have worked on this car, so again, they may or may not be there. You may notice too that the wires or the lights of your, the colors of the wires for your lights may or may not be what you see. But you don't need to have that all exactly right. You've got power, you've got ground, you know that. We have a switch which is gonna bring power in and have a wire that goes off to feed the lights. It's very, very easy. By doing this, we take the load off our light switch. Our lights are brighter, and safer, and we can enjoy our car.